and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. And on our program today, we are talking to someone that is going to give us a lot of information, and I believe he will really keep you gripped to your seats as he provide knowledge and his expertise on the running of the Parliament of the Bahamas. We'll introduce him when we come back from this break. Who said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price? If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corn Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. About perhaps uh, four or five months ago now, I started using Alive to stream my shows. And that's because I wanted to expose my show to a wider audience. And hey, streaming is where it's at. To the point now that it's become so successful. Here it is, right here. Here's my Alive phone. And I am currently streaming live. And people are now watching from several states in the United States. I have viewers as far away as Abu Dhabi. I have viewers in Italy. I have viewers in Canada and, of course, the United States. And certainly viewers right here in the Bahamas. It has been the most wonderful experience. Alive has been so incredible these five months. It's totally allowed me to expand my brand and expand the reach of the conversation that I can't stream live with no other provider. And so I believe in best. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and today we are going to have a informative discussion with the none other than the former clerk of parliament, Mr. Maurice Tynes. Mr. Tynes, welcome to Nation Building. Thank you for having me. I enjoy interviewing people like yourselves because you have a wealth of information and knowledge that our people need to pay more attention to and learn our history and um, the runnings of our country. And so we're, I'm delighted to have you here today. And so we'll waste no time, we'll dive right in and uh, ask you to share with our viewers. Um, I'm sure they've heard so much about you over the years and even in more recent times, but to just share a little about your background, your, where were you born and raised and a little bit about you, the person. Okay. Um I was actually, um, I grew up in, in Fox Hill. Okay, you're a fo Fox Hill man, Fox oh, yeah. Hillian. Oh, yes. I wasn't born in Fox Hill, but you know, like I always tell people, 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he's known as Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> it's where you do your work. Okay. And I, I've, I've, I've did my community work in Foxville from as a young, a young man. You remember how old were you? When oh, you... I, I would have started. Um, I would have started in, in organizations from I was in my um, mid teens. Okay. Yeah. So you wasn't one of those young people who got in a lot of trouble. No, well, no, I was, I got in a lot of trouble when I was in school. Okay. <laughs> but I kind of uh, grew out of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you spent your growing up days in Fox Hill, yes. safe to say. And um, uh, your parents, are they deceased? Or they yes, in? both of my parents are deceased. My, my father was a uh, policeman, spent a lot of time in the fire department and the police department. Um, he died in 1976. My mother, um, Lottie Tynes, a lot of people know her as the first Bahamian director of the Bahamas Red Cross. Okay. Um, she was her, um, I, I, I think I got my love for community work through her. Um, she, was, she, she was a real influence in my life. Um, unfortunately, she died. Um, in 2013. Not so long ago. Yeah, I am the, I'm the third of four children. Three, three boys and one, one sister in my immediate family. And, and uh, your siblings are still living? Yes, all of, all of my siblings are still living. Good, good. Um, what was like, life like growing up in Fox Hill? We hear a lot now about the issues and over the years in Fox Hill. Um, what was life really like? It, I, it was absolutely idyllic. Um, we, in my, in my, own, um, my own family's yard, we had every, just about every fruit imaginable. Hmm. In, in, dilly? Oh yeah, dilly trees, Gnep? mango trees, ganep trees, plum, plum, both coca plum and, and the other plum trees, but everything. So we, we, I, I more or less lived off my yard. All our neighbors had the same, had the same thing. Uh, my friends in Fox Hill at that time, we, we, we did everything, you know, we, we, we could have spin, um, spin top right in the street in Bernard Road, because there was very little traffic. Was it paved? It was paved, yes, but it was very, you know, the traffic was, was very minimal at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And you're talking what period? Oh. <laughs> I'm talking um, late 50s. Okay. 50s. Um, um, we, we used, uh, we went, used to go back to St. Augustine's, the monastery, and we, we played in the back there all day, you know, down the hill, skated down the hill, made box cars, come, came down the hill. And then um, the big part of my life was um, involved with St. Anne's Church, St. Anne's Anglican Church in Fox Hill. So you're an Anglican? Yes, I am. What, what, I can't help but to jump ahead and say, what is, in your opinion, the great difference uh, between then and now, beside, of course, time and technology and development, but what is, what is causing our young people to get involved in the crime and other issues and in communities like Fox Hill that were so peaceful and those native villages were known back then for being the epicenter of good, wholesome Bahamian life? I, I think um, our social institutions, all of them, the family, the community, the church, the schools, have, have not um, did what they ought to have done over the years um, and filling some of the, the gaps in our, our, our social structure. And um, it, it was a lot of, uh, in, in, in terms of Fox Hill, Fox Hill, um, when new, when new subdivisions started and, and new people start to enter into the um, community, you know, it started to change. Um, it started to change very early. Um, but I, I think those were the main influences, people um, migration into Fox Hill. Some of the older people dying out or, or, or moving away. And then, um, then, then the school system and the church system and the uh, family system, family structure. Eroded. Yeah, eroded. What, what, what in your opinion, um, is necessary to 
begin the process or hasten the process of restoration? I, I think um, the, the socialization um, process needs to be um, stronger, starting with the family. Uh, I think that's the, the, that's, everyone says it, but it's, it's true. It's the, uh, the, the problem. Everybody points somewhere else when yeah. it's, it's all of our. Yeah, it's, it's the family. Mm -hmm. um, you, don't see, you don't see the family, families do the things that they used to do. Uh, eat, eat dinner together. Um, then with the introduction of television and telephones and the other technology, it, it kept people, drew people further apart. Mm -hmm. Families are further apart. Um, I remember um, a lot of my, a lot of, a lot of my neighbors could not, they, come Christmas time, they could not, um, their parents probably couldn't afford to buy them new clothing or toys, but when you see when when it comes to Foxhall Day, they sh they were certainly going to get they were certainly going to get something new, and I think so. That those um those those community uh, values values I think uh, are not as strong as they and, were, and, and so that's a, that's a way forward yeah. to try to seek to restore them. Yeah. Let Let's talk about your professional life. Where did you, what was your first job and let's wake, work, your, work our way to your, <laughs> your um, prestigious post that you held um, being clerk of parliament? Okay, I, um, my first job uh, was at the immigration department. A lot of people don't know that, but I, I, I worked at the immigration department for a number of years. I was never, uh, I was never a uniformed officer. I was always in the clerical department and then the administrative department of, of the So that was your department. entry to government? That was my entry to government, yes. And you were hired as what? Ooh, a, a clerk in those days, I think. Okay. Uh, making about $60 a week. Okay. Was it pounds <laughs> and shillings then? Uh, no, it was, it was dollars. It was dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And so the, the, your next transition from there was where? Um, uh, I... I worked in Nassau for a number of years, and I, went, I was transferred to Freeport, okay. um, an immigration department. And then, you know, you, you, you do the, um, the assessment um, exercises in the, that, the, that the public service offer, of, offers. And um, I eventually was able to um, get to a position in, in my, um, in, in my um, studies and in my um, training that they offered me a position at, offered me to, to leave Freeport to come to Nassau to work in the cabinet office. How long did you stay in Freeport? In I, I spent six years in immigration in Freeport. Did you fall in love with Freeport? After a while, yes. It took, a, it took some time. <laughs> it took some time for me. So um, you didn't know newly, what you were getting into uh, yeah, when you I went down new, there? Yeah, I was newly married. Uh, with, um, I had a child, and my second child was born in, 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 in Grand Bahama. So it, it took me a while to re, to make that adjustment, about almost a year. <laughs> but after after um, I got I became involved in 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 in, in activities in Grand Bahama, I, I I really enjoyed it. And did you yeah. did you have a struggle to move back to Nassau? Well, I didn't. My wife had a little problem with it at <laughs> okay. first. Yeah, no, but. Um, you know, I, it was for it was it was a promotion, and right? So, and so you were motivated by an opportunity to move. Yes, on. and and, and the, I, I like I said, I went to the cabinet office, which is the central, the central government office in the public service. Right. And everything in government comes through there at one point or the other. Right. So it's a good training, training ground. ground. Yes. Absolutely. So, what happened then? You went to the cabinet office, and then what? Well, uh, while at the cabinet office, part of my um, the Senate does not have its own staff like the House does. Mm -hmm. the, the Senate is staffed or, um, by, by the cabinet office. And eventually... Currently, still? Partly, yes. That, that, we, we tried to get that changed, but it was never changed. I, th I think it's, it's in kind of an ancestral relationship because there are two different, um, two different branches of government. And should fact, function independently. It should function well, independently. Um, part of my job, I became, I became the clerk of the Senate while I was at Cabinet Office. And then that started my, um, my introduction into, 
into the parliamentary work. Yeah, if, I can, if I may say so, but the first part of um, while at Cabinet Office, I was also responsible. I was the chairman of the Hurricane Relief, Hamas Hurricane Committee, okay. which was the forerunner of, of NEMA. Mm -hmm. And um, in that position, I got to travel through mainly to the Caribbean. And um, we, we started the early pulling together of different agencies into the, into the um, disaster management. Would you see? Would you see? Would you see today? Now? Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is a properly organized and fully functional yeah. area. Yes, but um, in addition to being clerk of the Senate while I was in cabinet office, I was also the officer in cabinet office that brought all of the legislation and communications, anything that ministers had to do in the House of Assembly. Uh, you know, they they approved first in, by the cabinet. I was the liaison officer who took them from cabinet office to the House of well, Assembly. You, you, have, you must have a bank of information <laughs> on what has happened in our country over uh -huh. the years. Uh, and uh, and what, did you, by the way, have to sign any secrecy? Oh, yes. I did that early in my career. Yes. Clause. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you dealt with top level information about the running well, of the country. Well, in, while at cabinet office, I did because... Um, I, uh, for the last two or three years, four years in cabinet office, I, I, I was one of, the, uh, one of the secretaries in the cabinet meetings. Um, but in, in, in parliament, there's actually, there's really, there's no secret. There's no secrets in, in, in the parliament. Everything is open. Uh, right, but in cabinet. There. In cabinet office, yes. Things become secret because uh, before they, uh, they become um, for the public consumption. Right. Yeah, you know, it brings us to an interesting point, which is, I can't help but to ask you, how did you manage to, I, I'm sure you must have a, your own political leanings one way or the other, um, as a citizen, how did you manage to separate, with all the information you had and the exposure that you had, how did you manage to separate your um, personal thoughts and feelings of the what was happening and what has happened over the years in the country from your own personal po political preferences? I think it, it comes through uh, training, mostly. Um, you, you, you learn that you have to be professional. And even though you sit there, you hear people say things that you know are not right. Not true. And not true. Um, you, you know, you have to, you, you can't, you, you can't get up and, so, you know, that's not true, you know. We have to sit there and be quiet. But, <clears throat> you know, people think, they, people think you're very stoic and you don't smile. I, 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 I laughed many, many times sitting in the, in the chair in the House of Assembly. But um, a lot of times the cameras may not have been on me. But, you know, there are people said some very Un comical <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think uh, it's only human to, to laugh. Mm -hmm and to smile sometimes but you know i think it's the you have to be professional in that position so what 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 we saw as a stoic um maurice tynes in 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 the parliament in the proceedings was simply you being a professional yes yes and are you listening out um for anything that is um against the rules or the conventions of parliament so you can bring it to the speaker's attention Good. So. We're, we're going to dive into a lot more having to do with the Parliament of the Bahamas when we come back from this break. We're talking today on nation building with Mr. Maurice Tynes, who, of course, has served our country as clerk of parliament for uh, over 30 years. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages right here on nation building. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahama product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eaten. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is... Go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, 
It's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't wanna win. This is the start of a new day. I'm alive! Alive is igniting the mobile communications market in the Bahamas. The calls are clear. The speeds are fast. It's nothing better. This is Daryl Miller Live, and I'm alive! I believe in that. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. And today we are having a discussion, a very, very important discussion, um, historical, I believe, with Mr. Maurice Tynes, who has served, uh, you are the longest serving... No, no, I, no? I, I, no, I don't know. I, uh, there is a Mr. Smith that served much, much longer than but I did. But that's, you, you've served for over 30 years, since 1993, 90, right? January 1993, yes. January 1993, since you've been serving. But I'm not, I'm not the longest serving, But though. it's certainly a long time, 30-some <laughs> 30, 30 years. I'm, I'm one of the lo longest serving. One of the longest serving. Yeah. Well, um, who appointed you to that post? Well, uh, like I said, I was working in cabinet office. The clerk, the, the longtime clerk of the house, Mr. Percy Sanders, died in 1989. And it was Sir Lyndon Pilling at that time, who was the prime minister, he asked me if I wanted to be, um, become the clerk of the house. And I told him, no, I wasn't interested in that. I, I thought that was a dead end job for me. And, and so he said he asked me if I would hold on until they could they find they they could appoint when I said I I didn't have a problem with that. Okay. So I went to I went to the House of Assembly uh, as an acted as a clerk for about two or three months. By the way, how did you how how for for viewers watching, what training and preparation did you have to go into this position of, of clerk of, uh, of the house? Well, like I said, I w I was um, <clears throat> I was. I was the clerk of the Senate. Okay, so you prior to that, so you know the the the, the procedures and uh, rules and uh, are pretty are pretty similar. similar. Yes, very similar. Um, you you know the Westminster um, system is 
is similar all through the all through the Commonwealth. And so you know, um, once you once you once you, and and then from the from 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 what is from what the cabinet papers say should happen, you're privy to that. Uh, you're privy to those, and, and then you know, then you have a, when you go to the cab to the Senate, you have to apply it there. And so um, and then I, I went. Um, uh, I did a lot of I did a lot of training in other countries also. Over the years. Over the years, yes. So, so, so Lyndon Pinlin, our first prime minister, asked you to hold on. Yes. Uh, um, did you? What, what happened after? Um, they appointed Ms. Uh, Reverend Enoch Bakford as the as the, as the um, clerk, and so I went back to cabinet office in my duties. Okay. And um, <clears throat> that would have been late '89, '90, and in '93, uh, Mr. Bakford resigned as the clerk of the house. I think he retired from the public service. Okay. And at that, by that time, um, uh, the, Honorable, the Honorable Hubert Ingram was the prime minister, mm -hmm. and uh, he really didn't give me a choice. He said, you're going to be the clerk of the house. He told you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds like Mr. Ingram. <laughs> so, and so, you know, um, by that time, I, had, I always kind of knew I was, I was going to be in there. What, but so, why, did you, uh, why did you accept an offer from our former Prime Minister Ingram and uh, turn down outrightly an offer from Sir Lyndon? No, because by, uh, by that time, I think the, I had grown some more. I think the, I understood what the Parliament needed. And so I, I, was, I was willing to offer myself to try to see if we can improve things there. So let, let's talk about um, a little more about this whole role. First, I'd like to ask you up front, tell us what is in your mind the highlight and the low point of your service those 30 some years in Parliament as clerk? Wow, highlight. Um, I think um, I helped to plan, I helped to plan the um, the CPA conference. I, I, I have planned a number of regional conferences in, in the Bahamas, but I, uh, in 92, we held, um, I, was, I was acting, I was the clerk of the Senate. Um, and I, I was kind of like the, I was the, of the two, of the two clerks at the time, I, I was probably the senior, uh, most senior person. Uh, in terms of service, service to the government. Yes, mm -hmm. and so I would, I would um, be. I don't think um, I don't think Mr. Uh, Reverend Barkley like traveled that much, and so I, I had, benefited. I benefited from traveled extensively. But I, in '92, I was um, I, I helped to organize the um, um, the CPA. The what is the CPA, CPA for the, the CPA? Field? Is the is the Commonwealth um, Parliamentary Association. It is the it is all like the political arm of the Commonwealth. Um, they they are responsible. They, it's um, they they network through with all of the Commonwealth parliaments. They set up seminars, conferences, workshops for um, staff and for members of parliament and for politicians. So it is the it is you know there's no university where you can attend to become clerk or or even a member of parliament. But the CPA the CPA offers you the nearest training training for that. And 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 which brings me to an interesting point. My wife and I was on a cruise some years ago, and stopped in one of those Caribbean islands, and we found it. And I wanted to go and see what their parliament was like, and one of the first things that I was asked when I got there was, do you know Maurice Tynes? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so I, I assume by your network in working in these, um, with those other agencies in the Caribbean, those yeah. uh, clerks and yeah, so forth. Yeah, the, the clerks, uh, uh, especially, you know, the, the CPA is divided into regions. I think there are eight or nine geographic regions. And of course, the Caribbean is our region. And, you know, the the clerks over years become very, um, you, know, very you know, they become good friends. I think we are more than working colleagues. We, we become friends. You share a lot of information. We, oh, about yes. The are, yes, we call each other 
for advice and and and, and anything that's uh, that's they want to know anything new in your parliament. You want to know what's going on in their parliament. And so and so there's a good um, communication and. Let, let, let's talk for a minute about the, and get down into the procedures, the parliamentary procedures, because a, a lot of our public are uh, uh, quite ignorant about the happenings and the, the, well, they know the happenings. I mean, our people watch parliamentary, the parliamentary channel and so on, but about the rules, what is allowed, what is not, and so on. And so let's, let's, let's dive in and talk a little about, or somewhat about the um, first of all, our parliament, um, I've been advised, is the third longest serving parliament in the in region, the, in, in, in the in Western the, world? In, in the Western, yes. Western world, yeah. and that's something we celebrate. Um, explain to us the function of the Senate as opposed to the House, briefly. Okay, um, we, we are, our, our parliament is bicameral, mm -hmm. which means there are two houses. Uh, we, 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 we follow uh, the model of, West, of Westminster, uh, where they have the House of Commons and, and the House of Lords. Um, the House of Assembly was established um, the 29th of September, 1729. 1729. And um, it, in 1841, Governor at that time, the, the governors always had a council that gave them, that acted for them. Um, le, uh, they would, uh, one council, they would do legislative work, they would do executive work. But in 1841, the governor at the time, he divided his council into two, two separate councils. The legislative council became the upper house. Which is the Senate. Which is the Senate, which, which became the Senate in 1964. And then the Executive Council did executive work, like moves more like the cabinet, cabinet government. And when we, when we got our first written constitution in 1964, like I said, the Legislative Council became the Senate. And for years, it was, the more, it was the more prestigious of the two houses. You, um, you, you have members would, would try and get appointments from the House of Assembly to the to interesting the, to the so you to so, the house of, so, to the legislative council or the senate yes. so so you would have people that were sitting in what we refer to in the lower house yes who would prefer to be sitting oh, in the yeah. senate oh, oh absolutely Wh why why it was that's more prestigious at the time it was the it was the um, chamber that represented the queen or the king um, and um, it's I I think it was it was less political than, than the lower chamber. So the governor would have appointed? Yes, the governor appointed the, the, um, the council. So that members. wasn't really a, nobody voted for that and no. you didn't have to work for a political party. No, we didn't, you know, we don't vote for our, our senator yet now either. Right. So, well, <laughs> so no, so, so some, nothing, some, from that some, point some, of view, nothing has some changed. Some would say it's a package deal. <laughs> you, you vote for the party and who don't yeah. win, you get to be senators. Yeah, well, um, the, um, so yes, un until I think what started to change that was when with the introduction of party politics in the parliament in the, in the nineteen in the mid nineteen um, early and mid nineteen fifties. Yeah, fifty six. Mm -hmm. uh, fifty three. PLP was organized. Right, and then the election. Uh, and, and then the Senate, and then the UP was organized in, in nineteen fifty eight. Right. And I th I think with the introduction of party politics, the upper house became less prestigious. prestigious because of course you know you had party you had, your people div um, dividing themselves into parties and into into cliques more or less and so and that uh, hasn't changed oh, in no. 2018 no, no, <laughs> no. so so I, I think the the introduction of party politics in in, in the bahamas started the um, the making the Senate less, the, the less, less prestigious. prestigious as but, it was. But, but not only, some would argue, not only is the Senate to
they less prestigious. Uh, did the Senate, uh, they would argue that the Senate is simply a rubber stamp, which brings the question um, from your learned experience, is the public, those of the public who share that view, are they right and st uh, as it is today? And two, what, um, you, you talked about when that occurred. The question then I would ask is, um, do you think if that is true, if the public, those who share that view is, is, is right, do you think it's time to change uh, the model? Well, uh, let, let me put it this way, uh, Winston. There was, a, there was a Constitution Commission sometime, sometime in uh, 2013, 2014, around that time. It was chaired by, I think, McQueenie? Uh, 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 yes, Sean and McQueenie, McQueenie and, and um, Carl Bethel. Yes. And um, I made an appearance before that commission, <laughs> and I um, kind of got myself in trouble because I, I um, recommended the, the um, doing away with the Senate, incorporating those 16 persons in, in the House. But they, uh, but but uh, and, and but div uh, but during the electoral period, they'll be elected um, differently from the members of parliament. So what? So is that similar? What you rep recommended is that similar to what the U.S. practice is? No, no. Okay. okay. So um, explain. There are a number of um, there are a number of parliaments in the Commonwealth that 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 have gone to the proportional representation, okay. um, rather than the first past the post that we have now. Um, so I was I was I was recommending a mixed a mixed um, uh, system where the mem your 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 constituency representatives will be elected the same way they are now, but when you go into the booth to vote, you have instead of marking one X, you have two X's to mark, one for your constituency representative, and one for the political party that you want to to. Um, to um, some of your those 16 members to come from, and those 16 members would then be uh, elected by proportional representation. So let's say let's say the FNM got 48 percent of the of the of the popular vote in the in the election. They would get 48 percent of those 16. Which, which seems to be a fair. Uh, a, a, a fair representation. We'll get more information from you when we go to this break and come back. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. We'll be right back after these messages. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't want to win. No, no. I don't want to win. Well, as a live customer, I've really come to enjoy the national roaming that Alive provides. It makes sure that I'm in touch with the people I need to be in touch with at um, all times, uh, almost no matter where I am in the Bahamas. Recently while traveling on Elutra, I had the opportunity to use my live phone. Service was great, impeccable. Uh, the place where I was at didn't have internet uh, access, so I was able to use my live phone for that to make sure I stayed in touch for e with email. Um, even watching a movie on the phone. I also like that Alive has become such a great corporate citizen. After the hurricane, uh, Alive was very generous with persons from the Southern Islands who were impacted. And at a time when it was really difficult for them, came through with phones for them um, that they can stay in touch with their loved ones. Phones that when they go back home, they can continue to be in touch with their loved ones because Alive has their islands covered.
Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Today's discussion uh, that we're having with the Clerk of Parliament, I am sure in this final segment we're going to have to move faster, but we can't get enough of this. Very important uh, information, very informative, very educational. And um, so we're going to let him dive in um, to explain to us. Uh, you said in this previous segment that you got in trouble for proposing changes to the um the way we the senate is 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 presently constituted if, if for lack of a better term um why did you get in trouble and are you saying that the senate as it exists today is useless well i got in not when i said trouble i no one I, I didn't get reprimanded or anything that was scolded but um i got the looks oh, okay <laughs> you ruffled some feathers yes um, <laughs> um the Senate is, was, is uh, historically supposed to be a, a, a body of elder, mature, mature persons who would bring a, a different perspective to legislation than the, the lower house. They would have a second look at legislation to try to improve it when they can. Um, they, they can then propose, all, they also propose legislation. Um, I, I didn't think that um, that that is happening. It was happening or is happening now. It's it's really really controlled by the executive branch to the extent. Uh, and and so it's useless. So well, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say it's completely useless, but it, it certainly is not um, carrying out the, the 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 role that it was supposed the to be. Purpose yes, the purpose. Yes, the purpose of it was uh, it, it was um, established. Um, right now the. There's very, very, very few. I, I can count on one hand the number of pieces of legislation that have been proposed in the Senate. Over the last? Over the last, my, my time in 30 Parliament. something years. Yes. Ridiculous. Um, they, only, they, only, they only give their vote to the government measures that fall down, that come down from the House. How many, on that note, how many have been um, amended? Oh, the Senate has made, made several amendments to, to bills that were passed in the House. And I'm sure those would have been done with the consent of the government. Yes, the, they, the, they, are normally, they, they would normally go back to the cabinet and the cabinet would agree to them. And then they come to the House, to the Senate, and the Senate would approve them. Then they'd have to go back to the House. No, but what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, if I'm wrong, correct me. It seems, just looking on, that the, for example, government who has, it's a winner take all. So the, the party in power, once it passes a legislation in the lower house and that legislation gets to the Senate, uh, those senators on the government side, on whoever is in office, would they not um, make amendment to send it back without first getting permission, as in practice now? No, from, I, from no I, I think um, over the last years, the the leaders of the Senate have been at the serving attorney generals. Mm -hmm. And so um, if they saw something that needed to change, some um, that needed changing, they would make the proposal and, and amend it right in the Senate and then send it to. And you're saying they don't necessarily get permission from the prime well, minister? I don't know. I, I, don't know the, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I, they may go outside and make a call. I don't, I don't know. But. Um, but I, I think the, 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 the leaders of the Senate over the years, over the last two years, uh, two cycles, have been uh, very strong. Okay. Uh, uh, strong, or when I say strong, I mean very influential in their government. Right. And, and they, so have they, the, had they had the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but it's fair to say that the public's perception that the Senate in general, in the main, has been functioning as a rubber stamp. stamp. Is that true or not true? Um, true to the extent that very few amendments are made, very few um, legislation is proposed from the Senate, yes. But I, 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 I cannot categorically say it's a rubber stamp because they do they do bring um, um, some different perspective at times to the debate. To the to the debate and and to the legislation, you know, they they would propose amendments. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what the, they are supposed to be doing. Our, our public will often hear about Hansard, 
um, educate the public about what is the Hansard and, and the references. So, okay, the Hansard is the um, <clears throat> the unit within the House of Assembly that that does the verbatim reporting of what is said in the House of Assembly. So everything that's said in the House of Assembly is recorded on cassette tapes. And um, <laughs> they're still in the and, dark and, ages. And then <laughs> transcribed on computers. Then the editor would, would he would do the editing and the finished product would be the Hansard, which is the official records uh, record of the house, would have said in the house. So is it the, the document or is it the, the pretty much like a library? Is it the, which, what is really the well, Hansard? Well, the, the, the Hansard is the unit that works there, but it's also the finished product. Okay. The, um, the minutes, the, Hans, the, the, the Hansard is really the minutes, the procedural minutes of, the, of each sitting. Those are then supposed to be compiled in what we call votes at the end of the session. You know, a session of the parliament is from the opening of parliament after a general election to either to either to a um, when parliament is prorogued, stands prorogued. And that could happen four or five times during the five year period. Right. Or it, it's from the opening until parliament is um, terminated. Dissolved. Uh, dissolved. Right. Uh, like it was, we had no prorogations in between the, the two twelve and two seventeen yeah. sessions, yeah. which makes it kind of difficult for the staff in because everything is compiled in sessions. Right. And so if your session you is long very session, long, it's you gotta uh, yeah, accept it. Yeah. What is the benefit? And we're gonna have to speed up to try and get as much of this in as we can. What is the benefit? with using our current system of, of, of not government overall, but of selecting a speaker, as opposed to what happens, I believe, in Britain where there is independence. So the speaker, for example, is not uh, a, a member, a voting member of his party in the House, as I understand it. Um, and then, of course, you have the American system as well. What, what, what is the difference and what is the best, in your opinion, what works best for, for a country? Well, the speaker in the American um, federal, federal system is, he, he is just the, the leader of the, of the party in that chamber. In, that chamber. in the Westminster-style um, government, the speaker is supposed to be an independent, impartial judge. That's not a reality. In what, they, what they have done in, in the larger countries, especially in, 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 in Britain, in Westminster, um, once a person is elected speaker, he resigns from his party. That gives him a, a, a level of independence. So, from that, the, that, so his seat, become, that's a by-election? No, no, no. He, no, he just resigns from the party. He doesn't resign from parliament. From the house, okay. he resigns from this, his political party, and the life of his speakership then is only until the end of the parliament. No, not necessarily. Okay. And what, what what they also do is, if that sitting speaker wants to run in the in the next election, normally the parties would not run against him. Whoa. So he wins by acclamation, which then gives him another level of and he independence. Truly, and he truly is an independent. Yeah, in in the Bahamas, we have an we haven't done that yet. I, I have, I have, I say that we can't do it by convention like the like the British have done. Let's do it by legislation. You know, say if you speaker, then you have to resign from the uh, from your party. You know. I, I don't know if you will get any support. But, from but let's let me make <laughs> this one other point. In some of the countries in in the region, Trinidad, Saint Lucia, Grenada, the the three that I know about, on top of my head. Their, they, their constitution allow, allows them to elect a speaker from outside of the house. And that's another method of that's getting another independence. That's another method, getting someone who has experience and who has been in pol politics. And would, would you at least concede that our current system does not work in our best interest as a nation? Well, it, it doesn't work in the best interest because um, to make it work, you have to have the people who, who run it have to, have to make it work. And I, I think one of the main problems in the Bahamas is that our politicians are more loyal 
to the party that identified them, that gave them the nomination, and probably gave them, that funded their, their campaigns. So they, they have more loyalty to the, to the party than, do, than they have to the institution of parliament, which is the pinnacle of democracy, and we're supposed to come, and that's supposed to take, uh, your, your loyalty is supposed to be there okay. first. Wh which brings us to a very important segment in our program. Um, while you have been, uh, your name has been synonymous uh, with giving stellar ser uh, service, and as you've shared here with our viewers, in the parliament of our country for over 30 years, you have made headlines recently. And so you've become more famous. I don't know if you uh, uh, enjoy uh, uh, becoming more famous than you were in this way, but you've become famous, um, at, at least your name has been in the headlines. Um, and, and my question to you, while we're not getting in the gutter today, is simply, do you feel hurt, uh, betrayed, disrespected? After all, many of these people in, in government or in the parliament, many of them, uh, they certainly all know you, but know of your work over the years. Do you feel in any way hurt, disrespected, betrayed by uh, any of them? Of course, of course, it was hurtful to hear some of the things that were said. Mm -hmm. um, my soul is, is not resting at peace. Um, my my intervention. Uh, first of all, I didn't see the I, I didn't see the, the the sitting live, but I got a number of calls. Like saying, "Mr. Tang, you saw what happened in the house today." Um, and I, from I got it from politicians, and I got it from a lot of members of the public. My phone was ringing off the hook. Yes, and um, I said no. So I, 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 I made a point to, to be at home and to watch it when it was rebroadcast that later that evening, that night. Um, and I was really disturbed of, of, what I, what, of some of the things I said, I saw. But my intervention was, 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 was mainly to try to show that, you know, that you know, the, the correct procedures were not, were not followed. And um, the, you know, if you want to do it, this is the way you ought to have done it. And then, but what the the, the part that I really that really uh, um, made me kind of annoyed was the suggestion that the staff at the House of Assembly was political and, and not loyal to the government of the day. And that was that that was the reason for my intervention. Do, do you accept that? Uh the, and there have been pronouncements from the chair of uh, forgiveness have, have been given out and, and, you know, apologies and so on. And do you accept that in the heat of the moment, um, better, cooler heads did not prevail? And do you accept that um, the apologies that would have been given out? I, 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 I accept the apologies for, 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 what, for, what, you know, for what he said. Um, You're referring to the speaker, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, my, 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 what really um, I can't figure out is if you have to conceive, if you, you have to conceive words in your mind before you reduce them to paper, then you have to reduce them to paper, and then you have to read them. So, so those three, those three points, you can say, man, you, I can't see how they can see this, this ain't right. I but, shouldn't, but, I shouldn't but, do this. But at the end of the day, if, if someone sits down, be it the speaker or whomever it is, and says, look, I was wrong, do you accept that? Is I, I, accept, I accept the apology. I accept the apology. And is all forgiven. Um, I'm not a... I'm not a, I'm not a uh, You're not a forgiving man? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm not an ordained minister. Let me make that point. Um, I, I'm, still, I'm still hurt about it. Let me, let me put it that way. I'm still hurt. Um, I intend to, to, to the comments that were made, to share them with some of my um, colleagues in the, in the Caribbean, because I think it's something that ought not to have been, ever have been done in the House of Parliament and said. Okay, uh, we, we'll leave that there for now. We'll, let, let's quickly, as we wrap up in this last minute, how do you compare, and we've only had, what, four prime ministers now, how do you compare um, leaders of our country in terms of their greatness quickly? Um, who do you see as the greatest, and if so, why? 
I, I don't think, I don't necessarily see, no, um, see politicians as the greatest. Mm -hmm. I think we are leaders in, in other areas that have, have been more productive than our, our, our pol political leaders. I can put it that way. But of the political I, I, I leaders. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to pronounce, make that step and say, and, and rate, rate one, two, three, four. No, I, I can't do that. You can't do that. No. I think that's too much politics for you. Yeah. There, there, there are many in our country crying out for a younger generation of leaders to emerge and think that that's where the answer to our country's problems are. And as a senior a member of our society who have given stellar service to the country. What say you? Is that a problem? Is that the problem? Do we need a new generation? Do we need to get move away from your generation of leaders? I think we need persons to enter politics. First of all, if you're going to offer yourself to represent a, a group of people, you ought to have, you ought to be, to bring something to the table. You ought to have some kind of accomplishment behind you. Um, and then you, I think you have, we have to get away from the tribalistic um, nature in which we conduct our politics. I think that's the major, major problem. Um, they, you know, we, we get into these tribalistic camps and don't care what the party says or does, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow that line. So yeah, we don't, yeah we, don't have, we, don't, we need more states, statesmen. Rather but, than but, politicians. But talking about statesmen, so the, qu the quick point is, and the question I need you to answer directly is, do you agree or not that necessarily we need a new breed of, gen of, 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 of leaders or not necessarily? Yes, I would agree. I could agree okay. with that. Do, do you see, last question to you today, sir, is do you see another Lyndon Pinlin, or for those who are a part of the Free National Movement, another Hubert Ingram, uh, transformative leaders in, for, for this time. Do you see any in the parliament today, currently? Um, I think there are, there, are a number, uh, there are a number of people I think have potential. Um, I think the Minister, of, the Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, Michael Pintard, he has a great potential. Um, and I, just, ju just to make sure, do you see any on the opposition side? <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. <laughs> Certainly, I think, I think... Um, Anyone you want to name? I think that you uh, named the member. Well, I, I, I think I was always, I was always uh, impressed um, with the debating and, and the knowledge, his knowledge he brought to, to, the, to the parliament and to the public. Who's that? Was Fr Fred Mitchell. Okay. He's, he, you know, he's not a younger person, yeah. but I think he has the, the kind of... Um, he, he has the um, intellect that, that can raise the level of our politics. Okay. Okay, well, he, he's certainly not of the younger generation, no. but you've given your answer. Mr. Tynes, I, we're out of time, we're past time, wow. but I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing the wealth of knowledge that you have with our public, and I'm sure they're better off for it. And um, we're going to have you back at some point in the future. And um, so we thank you once again. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, it's been a great pleasure to bring you this broadcast today. Stay tuned for next edition of Nation Building next week. Have a great week.